Good morning, folks. Today we'll peek in on some deep space news. One of the Observer's favorites has two new papers out, and they're all about our star. We go through some weather as well, but we begin with the sun over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the expected continuation of quiet activity on March to both sunspot minimum and the grand minimum of the cycle. Top feature is the coronal hole turning to center disk now. Over in 304 angstroms, we can see some of the areas trying to become active regions. Those are the brighter areas we can see outsizing our entire planet. And I say trying to become an active region because solar flaring is nil. We've only got one real sunspot, and he's all by himself with simple alpha-negative magnetism at this time. Solar wind from Discover shows we're still inside the coronal hole stream, but that it has peaked, stabilized, met a measure of calm, and Earth's magnetic field is handling the enduring stream without issue as of this morning. The small glancing below CME did not impact Earth, and so the stream from this coronal hole is next up for storm potential. Tough to imagine its stream could miss as a transequatorial opening, and indeed, this is the return of the negative IMF openings as you can see in red on Gong. Let's jump 320 light years away where the inflated atmosphere of a presumably low density ice core's exoplanet has been discovered. Its tug on the host star considered, the size of this exoplanet indicates it must have the density of styrofoam. Not sure how to wrap my head around that one. Next set of stories, however, much easier. If any newcomers are unfamiliar with Dr. Valentina Zarkova, she has indeed been a favorite among the observers since demonstrating an impeccable use of mathematics acumen to take on our star. Magnetism is the key to understanding grand solar cycles, and speaking of which, they have reconstructed millennia of solar cycles and made a prediction with which we should all be familiar. The next grand minimum is upon us. It should begin, well, now, and last 33 years into the middle of the century. This is what every solar index shows. This is what the long-term patterns have revealed, and it's just about time we put this one in the bank. Furthermore, a re-examination of the Sporer Minimum, which kicked off the Little Ice Age that lasted through the Maunder Minimum, was actually driven by cosmic rays. Sun is going to sleep, cosmic rays on deck. Folks, let's come back to Earth where enhanced footage of Typhoon Maranti shows very well the pulsing wave-like action emanating from the eye. Also think I saw the flower of life in there. Anyway, for website members of SuspiciousObservers.org, you will recognize this action if you go re-watch the Electric Earth and Sun section. First three videos are the setup, leading into the heartbeat of the sun, the one to two minute oscillation of upwellings in the umbral cores. Reminds me of the rapid scat one minute cadence footage of that thunderstorm in the US a few years back, which sadly our government took down or archived or put in a place where nobody I know can find it. Anyway, we've got weather woes all over today. Tornadoes and flooding were deadly in the US last night and nothing about that is likely to change today. Eyes on your local forecasts. Meanwhile, across the pond, the Icelandic low is shifting such that its pressure convergence will continue to be strong across the southeastern portions of the UK, the mainland of Europe, and up into Scandinavia. Lastly, folks, as one storm is set to leave New Zealand, we've got major rain and flood potential coming to the northeast coastlines of Australia. You'll see it building as the Kiwi system departs. Folks, we've got the rest of the world's weather, null school atmosphere runs, and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.